Well, welcome back, everybody. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our next topic, which is DHCP snooping, both with the DHCP server being on the local subnet and remotely. So what we're going to do is on switch two right here. Will that actually work? Oh, I can. Cool. So right here on switch two, uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to configure switch two to be a DHCP server and to hand out IP addresses, uh, an IP address to PC one. Well, we're going to do that. We're going to see the DHCP process kick in. We'll run a couple of debugs and see the process. Then once we do that, then we'll go and we will convert the config so that router 11 is a DHCP server and we have to do the relay agent. We'll see how that comes into play as well. It's pretty much the same thing, but it's one of those things where we need to make sure that we understand how uh, this comes into play and goes from there. So with that being said, um, that's basically how we're going to go ahead and do it. Now, um, we'll have to do a little bit of tweaking around because there's a, a couple of additional commands we'll have to take take into consideration. But let's go ahead and we'll bring uh, switch two over, and I will bring it over, and we can take a look at the config. So uh, we're going to go into global config. Let's type an IP DCP pool is going to be uh, DCP. I'll type in network is going to be, we'll say, uh, 10.1.1.0 slash 24. The default router will be 10.1.1.1, and the DNS server will be 8.8.8.8. Then we'll exit out, and we'll type in the IP DCP excluded address will be 10.1.1.1. So we don't accidentally hand out the IP address of the default gateway. Once we have that done, now we're going to go and since the uh, uh, configuration has been applied, we're going to type in interface VLAN 10 and type in IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 24. No shut the VLAN because you need to do that in order for the VLAN to come up, or the uh, VLAN interface I should say. And then once that comes up, which it just did, we'll be able to go in here and type in do show IP uh, interface brief. We see the SVI is up. And we'll go to PC1, which is right here. Go ahead and uh, close the, I had an open VNC connection to it. So we'll go ahead and connect on PC1. And we'll drag him over. And we'll bring up our, our uh, super putty commit config. So we're going to come in here, log in. So what should happen now is we get an IP address. We see that. And so we'll go ahead and close. I'll pull up a command prompt. I'll type in IP config. And we have an IP address of 10.1.1.2, which is exactly what we need to have. So we come up over here and we say show, uh, show IP DCP binding. We have a, a binding in the database. Everything looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and enable DHCP by, uh, snooping here on the interface. So I'm going to type in IP DHCP snooping, and we have to enable it on the VLAN, uh, to enable it globally, and then on the VLAN itself, so VLAN 10. So we'll do that. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do a debug uh, DHCP uh, and hit the debug IP DHCP server and hit the enter key or I'm sorry we're going to do um, packet and then we'll do event so we've got that so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in IP config I'm going to do a release so I release that IP address and then I'm going to hit the renew command so that should trigger a new IP address to be uh, to be received and it was so if we come in here and we get the the process goes back and forth and we have everything working as it should be so because of the fact that we have the DCP server on the same subnet as the PC there's really not a whole lot to do to get it to work it's pretty simple stuff now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a show IP DCP snooping binding 
and we should have a binding, and we do. The binding is working, and everything looks pretty good. So with that being said, now what if the DHCP server is not on the local subnet, so it's somewhere else? And that's actually a very plausible scenario. So what I'm gonna do is on um, R11, so we'll go ahead over to R11, we'll go up here and we'll say host name is R11, and then on interface gig zero slash zero, I will type an IP address of 172.16. Um, we'll say 12.1 slash 24. I'll type in no shut. And then what we're gonna do is go from here and I'm gonna go to, um, so the part of the problem that I have right now is any interface that you can configure an IP address on, the main interface, so in this case here, gig zero slash zero, that interface replies to any type of communication on VLAN one. So in the in the scenario where I could potentially have a connection where um, I'm trying to form an adjacency with switch between switch two and R11, the thing that needs to be thought of here is do I have do I keep gig one slash two as a trunk link? or do I convert that to a uh, routed interface? So what I'm gonna do here, and I'm going to type in IP DHCP uh, pool is DHCP. We'll type in network of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. The default router will be 10.1.1.1. The DNS server will be quad eight. So that's pretty much all you have to do there. What I'm gonna go do now is on switch two, which is right here, I'm gonna do a show run pipe section DCP. So I'll turn DCP off on the switch. So we'll type in no IP DCP pool and no and no excluded address. So that'll take care of that. So now that we have that in place, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to on the switch. There's typically one thing that has to happen. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and now that we've got the DHCP excluded address uh, applied and the DHCP server is turned off. What I'm going to do is on uh, gig one slash two on the switch, I'm going to type an in interface gig one slash two. And right now the switch port is configured as a trunk link. I'm actually gonna turn it into a routed port. You might say, well, why are you gonna do that? Well, the reason I'm gonna do that is because in most cases, and this is just my experience, what we end up doing on this particular port is I don't normally ever run a trunk link if I don't have to, okay? Now, if this in this particular design, the way that this is set up is switch two is acting as a device that a group of address, a group of devices would connect to, and there's another link connecting upstream to a router or a firewall, and then that provides you internet access or whatever it is outside of that network. So almost like a small branch office type of design, where I don't have a, um, an architecture or a hierarchy of switches that I have to worry about and stuff like that in this particular design. So I don't need to worry about trunking or tagging or anything like that to come into play. So I come in here and do show run interface gig one slash two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the IP address of 172.16.12.2 slash 24. Okay, just to double check on R11. R11 is, okay, so do ping 172.16.12.2. Make sure that I can talk across the link and I can, that's a good sign. So now what I get to go do is I get to come in here and type in router EIGRP1 network of 172.16.11. or sorry, 12, 12.0.0.0.255. And then I'll go ahead and I will type in, um, I'll create a default route. So IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, and 100.64. dot In this particular case, router 11 is going to peer upstream to. Um, internet three and internet two. So I will do a configuration here. 
I'll point towards internet two on gig zero slash one. So in this case here, I'm gonna do a 21.2, uh, and then I'm gonna go type an interface, gig zero slash one, IP address of 100.64.21.2, Twenty-one dot eleven slash twenty-four, and no shut the port. And I'm going to go over to Internet Two, and on that port, which I I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head. I have to go look, and that's going to be port ten. So on port ten, I'm going to go ahead and and you might ask, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, what I'm trying to accomplish is actually going through and. Uh, configuring internet connectivity. So on internet 2, on port 10, so interface gig 10, IP address is going to be 100.64.21.2 slash 24. I'm going to no shut the port. And then I'm going to type in IP OSPF 1 area 0 because I just want to make sure that the, the route gets advertised into OSPF. Now it's not going to form an adjacency, but once the port comes up, which right now it just did. So do show IP interface brief. We're gonna do ping 100.64.21.11. Okay, so I can ping, that's a good sign. So now what I get to go back to, to do on router 11 is I can come over here now and on switch two, I'm gonna also form the EIGRP adjacency. So router EIGRP one network of 172.16.12.0.0.0.255 and network of 10.1.1.0.0.0.255 because if you don't advertise the local prefix in uh, router 11 won't know how to get back to the 10.1.1.0 network now what I get to go do is on router 11 I get to go in here and type in router router EIGRP1 redistribute static and that's all I have to worry about. So now switch two, we come over and switch two and do a do show IP route. We should have a default route pointing towards router 11. Now, because we have that in place, I can go back to router 11 and I can type in interface gig zero star zero. I'll type in IP NAT inside. And now we're gonna have to wait just a minute for the NAT config to do its thing. Cause normally it, uh, on this particular platform, it, it likes to wig out and I'm gonna, be able to go over to gig zero slash one and it becomes a CPU hog so you have to be kind of um, be patient for just a moment if you uh, my experience on Iowa's V routers is if you know you're going to be configuring um, NAT do that right away so interface gig zero slash one IP NAT outside and then create an access list and type an IP access list extended and call this NAT and then permit the 10.1.1.0 0.0.0 slash uh, 24 um, permit IP from the source of that to any destination and exit out and then IP NAT inside source list is going to be NAT interface gig zero slash one and overload and so now we have our NAT config in place so now what should end up happening is I should be able to go and notice how all of a sudden now the little light here turned to my internet connectivity now pops up that I have internet connectivity which is exactly what I intended to happen so now what I get to go do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in the release command so I want to release that address and I need to come in here and I'm going to release it, but I'm not going to renew it right away. So on switch two, I have to go underneath uh, do show IP interface brief. I have to go underneath interface VLAN 10 and type in IP helper address of 172.16.12.11. So we type in do show IP EIGRP neighbor. I am, oh, I'm sorry, I'm pointing towards dot one. My bad. So do show run interface VLAN 10. And I don't want to have too many helper addresses underneath there because I don't want to confuse it. So we have that. So now that we have that squared away. So I should have a helper address. 
So now what should happen is I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to try to get another IP address. I'm going to type in the up arrow and I'm going to type in renew. So this is going to go out and it's going to try to find an address. And it does. I get an address. If I do an IP config and I ping uh, 10.1.1.1, I can ping my default gateway. And I should be able to ping uh, 8.8.8.8, .8 and I can. And I should be able to ping google.com, which means DNS is resolving. So because of all of that, I have connectivity outbound, which is a great sign. So that's showing me that my DHCP snooping is working and all of that type of stuff. If we were to come down here and do a show IP DHCP snooping uh, for, B, um, that should be, so it, uh, so database. So or binding, I should say, binding. There we go. So let's talk a little bit about this output real quick. So what it's basically saying is I don't have any trusted interfaces. So you might be like, well, don't you need that to be enabled? Well, yes and no. So the trusted interface is normally something you put on a trunk link that's going to be connecting other to, over to, excuse me, uh, devices where uh, traffic is going to stay at layer two for DHCP. Now, if you're going to be jumping through, and I don't have, let me go uh, show run interface gig one slash two. I don't have that configured there. I don't have the trusted interface, right? But it did work. Now, in most cases, with the um, the relay uh, with the DHCP, uh, the helper address with the relay agent in place. Normally, you would use the trusted interface. Now, could I apply that and will it have an effect on it? Well, let's give it a shot. Interface gig one slash two. We're going to type in um, the IP DHCP snooping. IP, DH, IP DHCP. Yeah, it won't even let me do it because of the fact that um, it's a routed port. But if I was to go to, say, interface gig one slash three, which connects off to ASA, uh, ASA four, or let's do it on gig one slash one, because the router would be easier to set up quickly. We'll type in um, IP DHCP snooping, and I'd be able to trust the port, which means if I did that, it would trust traffic. So if R10 was our DHCP server, it would trust communication coming back in from R10 that's responding to the offer and the acknowledgement aspect of things. But since I don't need that to be there because it's a routed port, so let's try that out real quick. Let's do, let's go ahead and enable that. And the reason why I'm going to enable that, or actually I should say is uh, uh, switch port trunk, switch port trunk in cap.1q, switch port mode is trunk. So what I'm going to go do is on R10, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to configure a interface gig zero slash one and I'm going to type in that uh, it's going to be no shut the port, but I'm not going to do anything with the, the physical port. I'm going to type in interface gig zero slash one dot ten encapsulation dot one q ten IP address is going to be one seven two dot sixteen dot and I have let's do twenty dot ten slash twenty four and then what I'm going to go do then is on switch two I'm going to go ahead and create um, uh, so actually, no, I, I want to do, I don't want to do dot 10. And the reason why, so you might say, well, why not? Well, the reason why I don't want to do dot 10 is why, well, yeah. So because I want switch two to send the relay via IP, not layer two. So I want it to be a layer three resolution. So we'll do uh, dot 100. We'll do that. We'll type in the encapsulation dot one q is one hundred, and we'll type in the IP address is going to be one hundred dot ten, something along those lines. We'll type in router eigrp one network of one seven two dot sixteen dot one hundred dot zero. Get that guy going. 
and then we'll go on to switch two and we'll go ahead and type in interface or we'll say vlan 100 uh, vlan 100 we'll type in interface vlan 100 and we'll say that the ip address is going to be 172.16.100.20 24 we'll no shut the port and then that'll bring up the uh, the sbi of it and bring up the vlan and all that other type of stuff now what we'll do is we'll type in router eigrp1 network of 172.16.100.0 there we have it so what i'll do um that'll take a moment and then it does form an adjacency now what i basically have is i'll have two show ip interface brief i'll have two sbis one for vlan 10 and one for vlan 100. now because of the fact that i have that what that will basically require me to do is on interface gig one slash one or one slash one sorry um one slash one do show run interface gig one slash one i have the ipdtp snooping trust command placed on that port so what that'll enable me to do is if i go over to r10 or sorry r11 and i say do show run section DCP and I type in grab this um, grab this command right here but then I also type in no IP DCP pool of DCP I go over to router 10 exit out real quick and get that in place now do show IP interface brief and I am 172.16.100.10 on switch 2 do show run interface vlan 10 and we'll type in interface vlan 10 and the IP helper uh, address is going to be 172.16.100.10 and not 172.16.12.1 so that'll change so because of the fact that I have that and I'm not going to take the next step of uh, so I'm going to turn the the switch to process off I'm going to say uh, undebug undebug all we'll type in debug DCP, um, and we'll just pat, look at it passively. Uh, but see, this is going to be uh, client. So we'll look at it to see if it actually happens. But I'm going to debug DCP, um, debug IP DCP snooping. There we go. That's what I was. Uh, we'll type in packet and event. And then we'll go back over to R uh, R10, and I will come in here and I will do a uh, debug IP DTP server server and packet and event. So we'll do that. So now what should end up happening with all of this configuration in place? What we should be able to do is we should be able to hit the up arrow a couple times and do a release. So I'll release the IP. And then we'll do a renew and hit the enter key. So it should renew. So it goes, uh, R10 sees it coming back, back and forth and it gets an IP address. Now, as you can see, the information sent back and forth and everything looks pretty good. Um, on switch two, we see a little bit of data. And what we see on switch two is, and this is kind of important, and I'm glad you guys were able to see it. If we look right here, option 82 data in, indicates local packet. This is included. And what this basically does is the, the option 82, the information option, that includes the GIADDR, the gateway interface address. This is actually really important because what it does is it grabs the data from the DHCP snooping information and it goes, okay, what do I need to send upstream to the um, the, DH, the DHCP server, so the DHCP pool? If we look on 
router 10 and we do a show IP DHCP binding, our configuration tells us show run section DHCP. The default router command, as you can see right here, as soon as it wants to load, the default router command. This says, if you receive any DHCP messages with a gateway interface address set to 10.1.1.1, this is the pool that you pull from. You pull from the pool of DHCP. And you hand out addresses inside of that address range. And that's basically how that comes into play. Now, if we look on router 10 and we do a show IP route, we are getting redirected back down towards uh, for, for egress. So if I was to come in here and I was to type in ping google.com, I'm curious to see if it would actually work. And it will. And the reason why is because the routing is working. So let's do a quick trace, trace RT dash D to 8.8.8.8. So the routing is a little goofy, but you're gonna see that what actually ends up happening is, go ahead and uh, control C the traffic. So the very first hop here we have is 10.1.1.1, which is our default gateway. Then we hit the 172.16.12 network, which means what? We go out switch two, right? So you might say, well, are, are we hairpinning or anything like that? No, not at all. The reason why is because right now R10 is acting as our DHCP server, but R11 is acting as our default gateway. So the DHCP server does not have to sit on the default gateway. It could be any arbitrary device or location in the network. All it is showing is how traffic is being forwarded. It just it goes to show you that you don't need to have anything else in place beyond what you have. So we've tested both DHCP servers on the connected device. So in switch two is considered to be the first hop. And then uh, R11 was configured as a DHCP server, as a default gateway. And then it was moved over to R10 just to prove that it didn't have to be there. But I we configured a, um, we configured the connection between switch two and R10 as a trunk link and by configuring that we were able to go and use the trust command and go from there now you might say well what happens if on switch 2 and we were to go in here and type in config t and type in no ip dhcp snoo uh, snooping information option okay so let's go hypothetical let's do a, cover a quick hypothetical if we were to come in here and type in the release and then the renew if we were to do this, what does still get an IP address? And it does. They might say, well, how is it going to know if it got it or not? And you can see right here the D, the GADR address and a couple of these was being stripped out. So this one right here was being stripped out. It eventually figured it out. So if we go to R10, we can see the information going back and forth and stuff like that. So even though we typed in the no DCP information option, it, let me go scroll up here to up here a bit. So what we ended up doing is we caught, is it was grabbing, dumping the binding for what was there. And then it was going out and even though it was, not filling in the the gateway address, it was going out. This is a discover message. And if we come down here a little bit further, we have the offer. So let's see, VLAN 10, it received VLAN 10, but what did we do on switch two that helped us out? Do show run interface VLAN 10. we have the DHCP helper address, right? So we pointed towards R10 for our connectivity. R10 received that and goes, oh, well, you've gotta be pulling from that client. But what if there was another one? IP DHCP pool of, I mean, in the, the default router, well, let's go uh, not right and network of 10.1.1. Um, we'll do 
0 slash 24. And the default router of 10.1.10.1 and the DNS server of Google DNS. So we'll go ahead and do this one more time. See what happens. Release. And then renew. I see the little flicker on the, the VNC and it still grabs the right address. So if we go back to switch two and there's no GADR informa information, but if we look at the back and forth, even though we configured the wrong, um, wrong data, because of the fact that do show run interface VLAN 10, because of the fact that this address right here is configured, and because of the fact that do show run section DHCP, because this configuration right here is correct, because it received and it was able to populate the gateway interface information based off of that. So it hit the default gateway. There's a helper address that pointed it towards router 10 and the switch goes, okay, well my gateway address is 10.1.1.1. So this is how you end up pulling the data. So the traffic comes in, the gateway address there information, when you turn that information on or off in is just informational per, for informational purposes. So there isn't, it's not like that command is going to uh, reduce the capacity or capability of DHCP doing its job. So it, even though that the DHCP pool of not right is there, the default router command is, um, but if we were to go and type in this command and type in dot one, we'll say that it was both the same. Let's see if that would have any effect. Okay. I have a suspicion that this is going to pose a problem because it's going to be like, well, I don't know which pool to pull from, and but it did pull from the same one. But my suspicion is the reason why I was able to pull from the same, the correct address is show IP DCP snooping binding because it knew there was an entry in there already because it was pulling off from information. But you might say, well, what if the clear IP DCP snooping binding and star what if there is no entry and we did this again right we come up here hit the enter key and we went down here we did the re release the renew My suspicion, in this case here, is based off of the fact that it's able to determine based off the 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 matching variable in the sub in the prefix. So show run section DTP. Uh, if we look right up here at the config, we're gonna see now. I'm at this point here. I'm speculating because I honestly don't know. It's, I'm presuming that it's seeing this. But if I was to go to this one here, I'm actually really trying to have it not work to see what that would actually look like. So let's go and do this. Let's say for instance, I was to pull this address. So this is the not the, the wrong. Uh, so a pool already exists for network 10.1.1.0 slash 24. So here it's basically saying, you know what, even though your do show run inter, uh, do run, uh, show run section DHCP, even though you've got, uh, and this pretty much is how it's gonna do. So even though the default router command is set up uh, to be the same address, um, that one matches the default router prefix. So we're gonna reply with that specific pool. This particular uh, prefix is wrong so we can't respond with that information and you can't have two pools with 
the same network statement. Now you can have host addresses and stuff like that that come out of that pool that are specific to a, uh, that are specific to a particular host. In this case here, we have a situation where we have 10.1.1.0/24 and the default router 10.1.1.1. So even though we tried to mess with it based off this, this the uh, default gateway and the, the prefix would have to be the same, the same major subnet. So basically, that's how. I'm interpreting based off of what I'm seeing, how that's coming into play. So that's just my interpretation of the issue at hand. But beyond that, guys, I'm not going to read any more into it than that because I don't feel like there really is necessary. I have did way more testing on this than I thought I was going to, but it's okay. It's, I'd rather do it thoroughly, you know, and make sure that I've covered it than not and be like, oh, I don't know. So with that being said, thanks everybody for stopping by. And until next time, guys, take it easy.